What's up everyone? John here with Motivation Theory running and it happened. China bans all extreme sports to include ultra running, trail running, uh, wingsuit flying uh, in response to the 21 deaths and the ultra marathon on May 22nd. So uh, we all know at this point that extreme weather hit the uh, Yellow River Stone Force trail race uh, trapping many people injuring many people and 21 folks losing their lives out of 172 competitors i'm sure we're in the midst of a large investigation over there um, the general administration of sports announced an indefinite suspension of all high-risk sports sporting events with unclear management responsibilities imperfect rules and unclear safety protection standards. These included cross-country running, wingsuit flying, ultra marathons, and desert races in order to fully guarantee the health and safeguard uh, the lives of the people uh, competing in these events. Uh, when I first read this, it seemed like an extreme response to something um, that we probably take for granted, at least here in the States, that there is some standards and, and things taking place to ensure the safety of the competitors. Now, I know in the States, uh, I was here looking at the American Trail Running Association. They have event standards, so you can get, I guess, your your, uh, your events certified. And they have a lot of best practices where they talk about race organization, logistics, uh, event and information registration, entry limits, uh, the course where you're really going around and making sure that the course is safe, environmental awareness, make sure you're not having a huge envir environmental impact. Uh, safety, the plans, uh, logistics, you know, people there that are ready to respond, having plans in place, time limits, uh, rules for fairness and penalties, uh, and, and results in awards and delivery goods. So just how you manage the entire race. But this, what they're worried about in China now is around the safety. What is, what is being planned uh, ahead of time and the experience of, the, of those who are actually holding the events. Uh, they also said the administration statement also ordered local authorities not to hold competitive sporting events unless absolutely necessary uh, and to cancel any other high-risk events in the lead-up to next month's celebrations of the Chinese uh, party's centurion in order to uh, ensure a good environment and atmosphere. So I guess they're having some national uh, celebrations and they don't want to have any other uh, bad things happen. Um, they're going to be conducting a risk, risk assessment of competitive activities and related services, including safety management analysis of weather and geological conditions and emergency rescue, I guess, responses to these things. Um, so what it looks like, they're doing something that seem, that it's positive. They're going to make sure that there's some rules um, while the cancellation and suspension may not be permanent. It doesn't sound like it's a permanent thing, but right now they're they're, they're doing a, a very serious timeout on all this stuff to ensure that um, that the correct response, that the correct things are put into place, that you can't just randomly hold events without any experience, without any standards, without anything that is going to ensure the safety of the runners. Now, as ultra runners, I think we all take on a certain amount of calculated risk. Uh, we're not assuming that we're going to be left on the tops of mountains. Um, I do know that they have a lot of safety briefings and planning, and there's just a lot of logistical planning that is communicated to us when we run ultras, uh, at least some of the ones I've run. They've done a really good job about that, and you're aware of how far everything is. I know in this past race in China where these these folks lost their life, there were there was mandatory gear. And from what I've read, um, a lot of the gear that could have helped saved, save a lot of these people's lives was actually not sent to the area where they needed it most because it was so inaccessible uh, by foot and vehicle. So they just didn't do it. They put it in the next aid station and people weren't able to actually get there, uh, which is, is kind of crazy. I've been in races where there's been you know, nine miles over a mountain and nine miles back with no way, uh, well, the vehicles could get there, but there were no aid stations. So it definitely makes dropping hard. So if you try to drop in the middle of that, you got to go one way or the other. If your phone's not working, the phone signal's not great. The tops of the mountains usually. Um, 
but the change in weather uh, is something you got to keep your, your eye on. So I'm hoping that they do come up with some standards. They have a standardized, uh, maybe an organized body that will come forward and step and, and, and make sure that step forward and make sure that they're uh, following this. But I'm sure there's going to be a lot of laws passed now, uh, not just governing bodies that are non-official, just uh, to make sure that the safety of these folks is, is being uh, kept first and foremost. Um, they said one of the, the major things here, uh, concerns raised about the disaster was the apparent lack of awareness of the changing weather and lack of cold weather gear in the, uh, in the mandatory equipment list. Um, and a long delay when it came to actually canceling the race. So, so when they started to see the change and when they actually reacted to it was, uh, a lot more delay than probably anyone would have wanted, um, this this disaster really hinted at poor contingency planning and communication to local race authorities um, and it really I, I think because there's really been nothing like this that has happened uh, it, people don't think that the this something like this can happen i literally have never thought something like this can happen now we all look at things like bad water and you, you can see the inherent danger and severity of a race just because of the elements you're running in but you don't think like there's going to be mass casualties because of lack of planning. Um, China has seen an explosion in the popularity of ultra running over the last couple of years, which is great, which I think ultra running is a fantastic sport. And I hope that this tragedy doesn't affect uh, the sport in a negative way uh, because it, it's, it could be a completely safe sport. I, I hope that it will affect it in a, in a positive way and at least as the sport grows around the world, people will take the time to, to do it correctly and to plan and keep people safe because that's what we all want. You know, ultra runners, we love these extreme things, uh, but we want to do it in a controlled and relatively safe environment. Uh, we don't want to risk our lives every time we go out on a race. Now, some people do a lot more extreme races, and I know around the world there are a lot of places that are a lot more treacherous to do these type of things. Um, but me personally, I like calculated risk and I definitely would, you know, be awesome to do races around the world as long as they're safe. Um, so it looks like China is really going to crack down on this and, and, and try to make sure that change is going to be, uh, first and foremost, safety first for this people. And, and then, um, maybe turn it over to a governing body, uh, for racing, maybe they'll create some sort of uh, organization that will do that within their government. I don't know exactly how they operate over there. It's a little different than the United States. So anyways, that's the news. China is canceling all extreme sports, all ultra marathons, and hopefully they can get squared away and get people back to doing what they love and in an honoring and way towards those who lost their life. And uh, we can make sure that this never happens again to anyone else in the world that's all I have. You can click right here to learn a little bit more about ultra marathons and my journey in ultra marathons. Take care. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.